Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the importance of locking out on presses. Uh, now I know this is a video I cover from time to time, but I think this is one of the topics that is important enough that if someone made a video on this three or four times a year, that wouldn't really be too many because it's something that uh, gets pushed the other direction by so many people in the fitness community, and if no one is out there being a dissident voice actually explaining the reality of the situation, uh, then people are going to continue to learn and believe bullshit and nonsense. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little crafting, and we're going to go into this a little bit. All right, uh, cliff notes for people who don't like the long videos. Uh, basically, not locking out on presses, contrary to one of the myths that are out there perpetuated oftentimes by bodybuilders and some YouTubers, uh, not locking out on presses actually <laughs> increases your chances of injuring a joint over time and it doesn't give you the full strength and mobility of your uh, joints. You're actually better in terms of joint health if you lock out and you're going to be stronger and have more power and have a different deceleration curve if you lock out on all your various presses, uh, which could matter in real world activity ranging from punching uh, to pushing something to throwing an object, all sorts of different things where you might actually want to be powerful in some situation in real life uh, outside of the weight room. Um, doing so will benefit you tremendously in terms of performance. So let's go into a little more detail there. All right, there's this myth perpetuated oftentimes online uh, that locking out on presses actually hurts your joints, that it's bad for them. Uh, a couple points to consider there. Number one, if your joints weren't meant to lock out, why do they lock out? And number two, why is that the strongest part of your range of motion? Why are we so much stronger there uh, if you're not meant to do so? Um, it's a perfectly natural, normal function, and in fact, many, many activities that you would engage in as a human being uh, that we have for millions of years, even before we were human-human, involve locking out our elbows, particularly throwing things, pushing things and throwing things, uh, generally required a pretty hard lockout. And what you're going to find is that it is our strongest part of our range of motion. If you don't believe me, you don't believe that you're a lot stronger on the lockout on a press than you are near the bottom or the middle, uh, watch any power lifter who does board work or pin presses or anything. You'd be surprised how many of them can push 200 more pounds uh, or more sometimes doing their lockout than they can on a full range of motion. Try it yourself if you think I'm kidding. And the thing that's going to be interesting, go do it. You know, if you bench 300 pounds, go try putting 400 pounds on there and uh, pressing it a few times off the pins and you'll notice your elbows are probably not going to be hurt or sore from doing so. So think about that for a minute. If you can use a heavier weight than you've ever been able to use for a max doing full range of motion on just the lockouts and it doesn't injure them, what would make you think that you're going to injure them doing it with a lighter weight? Now people always come up with this idea, well you need to do it for constant tension on the delts or the chest or whatever it is you're trying to work on these presses. Uh, where's the evidence for that? Is there any data whatsoever that constant tension like that without just doing full range of motion reps actually increases muscle gains? I've never seen any. And in fact, most data shows that usually if you do full range of motion on exercises, you usually end up with slightly better growth in some cases. So it's complete nonsense based on nothing. Um, and the other thing to consider there is that your joints become healthier and more mobile if you actually train them through the full range of motion, through their normal healthy full range of motion, which would include locking out the elbow, if you do that, your joints tend to develop better mobility. In fact, if you do enough full range of motion, deep range of motion training in the weight room with actual weights, you might find that you don't need to do any stretching or mobility work um, outside of your lifting. There are many, many athletes who've learned this over the years who spend enough time lifting every week uh, they develop sufficient mobility and great mobility and flexibility without doing any stretching or mobility work uh, because they train their joints to actually work through the full range of motion. They make themselves mobile and flexible. Uh, and so in many cases, they don't have to continue to do that stuff anymore. So again, that joint health comes from actually being strong through the full range of motion of a joint through its normal healthy range of motion. Uh, doing partial reps doesn't always achieve that. So if anything, your chance of injury is going to be higher uh, from doing partials because you're not really training the joints through the full range of motion that they, they could really benefit from. So it's complete nonsense. It's a myth. Now, as far as power and everything, what people need to factor in there 
Um, not only do you have the fact that a lot of uh, power lifters, they do some partial work, generally the more equipped guys, but they do find they're a lot stronger on their lockouts, and so they do a lot of strong lockout work. And that's one thing that's uh, gotten popular over the years in powerlifting. But another thing comes from one of the most brilliant uh, guys out there in powerlifting. He was kind of a game changer, Louis Simmons over at Westside Barbell. And he got a lot of this information from older Russian researchers and physiologists because he went and dug into all their stuff and got a lot of information from the Russians. And what he learned is that the Russians had figured out that we have a deceleration curve when we lift a weight. Well, what does that mean? Uh, when you think about it, like you lift a weight explosively, right? A bench press, a squat, a deadlift. In your mind, you're thinking that bar is moving fast the whole time, all the way to the end, right? But did you know that's physically impossible? That weights do not go from moving this fast to an instantaneous stop. There is actually a curve in your body when it's moving a weight to a certain point in the range of motion where your nervous system starts to slow it down because it knows you're getting near the end of the range of motion and it doesn't want to jar things too bad. So it will start decelerating. And besides, it knows you're already stronger there, right? So, because uh, you generally have an advantage at the top of most of these lifts. So it will start decelerating things. And in some cases, that can reduce power output. Well, it always reduces power output, but it might cause someone to miss a lift because they're decelerating too much near the as they're finishing out an exercise. What he found is that overloading the lockouts with things like chains and bands to create accommodating resistance can actually shift the deceleration curve. Meaning you can do that and train your body to, since it gets used to the weight getting heavier and sometimes bands and things pulling against it as it's getting closer to the lockout, that it changes the deceleration curve. It's used to having to push harder near the top so it doesn't decelerate as much. So by using these methods, he found that he can actually get things to lock out even harder so that you don't miss max effort lifts. Well, what's the moral of that? Well, the moral of that is that when you know that we can do that and it can affect um, the explosiveness at the end of a movement, that means not training it at all is going to cause an even larger deceleration. Meaning, if you continually train with partials, you train yourself to decelerate even sooner uh, than the lockout quite a few inches sooner well, what does that mean for power generation when you need to actually do something that requires a lockout of the arm again you want to throw a baseball uh, any ball you want to throw a spear you want to um, throw a punch or you need to push somebody off of you or push something in an emergency i mean things happen not just violent conflicts things fall on people i mean there's a lot of situations to where you might need to actually push something really hard, whether it's a person or an object, uh, many emergency situations. Uh, but again, for a lot of things, a lot of you want to go out there and throw something. You want to throw a ball around. You might even be going, I don't play any sports, but then what happens when your nephew wants you to go play baseball with him? And you want to throw a ball or whatever and have some fun, do another just guy stuff. Um, you'll actually be better at throwing an object if you have done the full range of motion. And the reason? You haven't trained yourself to decelerate sooner so accordingly what ends up happening when you need to actually do something like that to create speed strength because uh, there is a strength component there but it's speed you're trying to develop it's just power generation force generation if you've trained yourself to not decelerate so quickly you'll be able to throw things better and if you can throw it better again you get more speed more power in some cases more control so by actually doing all this stuff through the full range of motion you can actually improve your performance in a lot of real life activities that are sometimes hobby, sometimes fun, but in some cases real emergency situations. It depends on the context, I suppose. But by skipping the lockouts, you've gained no advantage, you've gained no muscle, you've reduced your ability to uh, do a lot of real world activities as effectively as you could, and you've increased the chance of having a uh, less mobile joints, you've uh, increased the chance of injury. So basically, they're all negatives without a single proven advantage to skipping lockouts. And so therefore, when you think about it, if you're going to spend the time in the gym and do the same amount of sets and reps, why wouldn't you perform them in a way that's gonna give you the best uh, use and carry over outside of the gym to real world things that might potentially give you the best progress, because I assume you're in the gym to make gains, 
and that will actually give you the most joint health and reduce your chances of injury. Why wouldn't you do it that way? So when you look at it from that context, it only makes sense that a reasonable person would lock out on all of their presses when there's absolutely no advantage to skipping the lockout and only disadvantage and potential disadvantage by actually skipping it. So it only makes sense that it's important and that it's a good idea in general to always do the lockouts on your presses. I mean, seriously, think about it. Think about everything I said, and if you disagree with it, see if you can actually come up with a reasonable argument. And remember, this whole idea of the continual tension, there's nothing scientifically or rational to support that. It's just something some bodybuilders made up. It doesn't mean it's actually real. You know what actually makes muscles bigger? Putting them through increased tension over time, which means either more weight, uh, more workload, so more metabolic fatigue over time, which again could be done with doing more reps, more sets, not by creating constant tension, and by giving them enough sleep and food to recover and grow. That's how you make a muscle bigger. It's not about continual tension. That's not even a factor that I'm aware of. I've never seen any evidence that it is. Muscle growth is not as complicated as people oftentimes make it out to be. It's got some complicated components but the actual methods behind getting there are really not that complex, guys. You don't have to do silly stuff like partial uh, range of motion exercises. Unless there's a valid reason to do a partial on a lift for some performance reason, or because of some previous injury or something preventing you from doing a full range of motion, it is usually better to perform an exercise with a full range of motion if the option is there. Uh, as long as that range of motion is a normal, healthy movement for the joint. It is possible to take joints on certain exercises deeper than they're supposed to go, something like sometimes a weighted dip, but the healthy, normal range of motion should generally be used. It's usually in your best interest, and that includes most exercises, not just the press, but it very much includes presses. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.